practitioners to heal from uh, chronic fatigue who have that. And that also is a very interesting history in terms of the last 30 years of research on um, that type of fatigue was thought to be purely emotional. Mm -hmm. Then it began to be seen as associated to trauma and Mm -hmm. trauma memories in the body. And Mm -hmm. now it's possible that it's related to immunological issues that could have as much to do with what we eat and Mm -hmm. our environment as any of those things. Right. So for those listeners that have chronic fatigue syndrome or related sorts of fibromyalgia, related sorts of complications, Mm -hmm. what are some of the treatments that uh, you would recommend that individuals engage in in terms of that whole mind-body connection? Well, now, Carol, I want to be very um, honest that I don't feel like I have a set regimen of what someone needs to do and and my what i really have discovered Uh, over time (laughs) yeah when i what i've discovered over time when i've met others um it's um with chronic fatigue or this mix of immune system deficiency you know that these that package that you described very well um i find that it it requires typically a a mix of both traditional and complementary alternative interventions i mean that's what i'm doing at moonstone center with you know the, the mental health field is looking at a combination of those, an integration of those two approaches. It's Eastern and Western. I think we need both, the yin and the yang. You need, <laughs> you kind of need mm-hmm. all the whole. And and I think these illnesses are really not specific. It's not like it's one specific treatment regimen as much as holistically attending to your body. Um, I know mm-hmm. for myself, my diet was really key. Um, my hormone levels were and are still at issue. Um, my um, I had anemia at one point, um, which could be tied to my diet, which could be tied to my mm. hormones. Um, I had uh, I also had a pattern of go 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 and not listening to my body. I mean, I would just keep charging mm. ahead and not pay attention. I mean, I really was disconnected. And if you'd said I was disconnected, I would have probably said, oh, oh no, 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 you know. Um, but you know, mm-hmm. in hindsight, I'm like, I wasn't really paying attention. Um, my nutrition still, if I'm off, I, there's a set diet. Um, you know, mine was uh, candida-based, which is, you know, systemic yeast. It was throughout my body and my bloodstream. Um, mm-hmm. And the hormones, the adrenals, my adrenals, I, I, I characterize as my adrenals were shot. I mean, they just were not there. And I get a B12 mm-hmm. shot every week. Um, I mm-hmm. am not, I, you know, as much as I preach yoga, I ebb and flow with how consistent I am. But when I am consistent, I am better. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I go to acupuncture. There was a time when I did not use acupuncture. There was a time I integrated it in. It was very powerful. Um, and I think sometimes what works, uh, homeopathic medicine, I found very helpful up to a point. Um, I also needed mm-hmm. Western medicine. Um, and I, what I think is it's a complex, your body is somehow out of balance. It's not integrated well. And I think, yeah, trauma people, people who've been through trauma, you know, especially as children, is probably into their bodies, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I do think mm-hmm. our environment is full of toxins. You can just look at the air some days mm-hmm. around L.A. or any other city. Um, Memphis can look horrible when I fly in there, when I visit Tennessee. Um, and these are beautiful cities and wonderful, but you know, the pollution's in the air, so we don't know what that's doing. We find every year about another food item or food source that's got this or that, you know. And I I just think that – and then I think we're also learning about individual allergies. People have food allergies that maybe they weren't as tuned into as they were before. So there's just a lot of – a lot of pieces to it. And and to me, that's why I'm saying it's a holistic approach. Um, and when I refer to the acupuncturist, she's got her whole other assessment, and she's working at balancing the different mm-hmm. organ systems and the energy and in the body in a way that is slightly different. It's a similar language to yoga, but it's a little bit different. She's trained mm-hmm. in Chinese medicine and has herbal remedies for things, and um, and they're very powerful and effective. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, for certain things, for certain things, and so mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I, I think it's more of it requires that people listen to their bodies, that they mm-hmm. um, not stop when the Western doctor says there's nothing else we can do because usually mm-hmm. there is something else that can be done. Mm-hmm. It may not be in traditional Western medicine. It might be in, you know, complementary alternative approaches or in mm-hmm. Eastern 
medicine um, practices. Um, and increasingly there are doctors out there that are blending both. Mm-hmm. You know, the doctors that helped me the most were Western trained. One was also Chinese medicine trained. Another one was Western trained, but very open to, and actively using herbal mm-hmm. remedies to interface with her, you know, hardcore use of <laughs> Western prescription meds. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it wasn't, it's the integrated folks that are, I think, have the, that are the most um, productive, most efficient, most effective. So. Well, thanks. That's a, that's a great description. I think as a psychologist, we, uh, you really do portray how psychologists, counselors, marriage therapists, none, none of us can uh, sit comfortably thinking that we're only dealing with the mind and the emotions. We're also dealing with the body. And yeah. that we're in, they're an integrated whole unit. It can, you know, we, we also had a recent um, person, Joyce, Teresa Joyce, that talked about sexual abuse. And uh-huh. I'm mindful that when you're talking about trauma, that the body, the emotions, the brain remembers trauma, abuse, and tragedy, and Absolutely. that that in the process of remembering that uh, it, it is, we can avoid, we can pretend, we can even grow beyond it, and then have to revisit it like uh, like because there's a trigger that goes on. But how do you see your integrative approach uh, with the Big agree, big element of what you offer as a psychotherapist, a, a psychologist, and then integrating it with these other individuals. How do you see a person with trauma, tragedy, or abuse being able to look at themselves and say, oh, I'm this collective, and on all these levels I need to nurture, and then I, I go first to a psychologist or maybe a medical doctor, but how, how would you see the integration of that process as a therapist? Um, well, I mean, that's, I think that my answer is at the core of how Moonstone Center works, um, and, and that is through collaborative treatment teaming. Um, I, I have several cases um, right now who uh, maybe are not coming to me specifically for sexual abuse, but I, I can't, I mean, we know this as therapists, that once if someone comes in for one reason or another, it is not uncommon that sexual abuse is underneath some of the symptoms that they're presenting with initially. And and the sexual abuse may be also connected to physical abuse and emotional abuse that's not all by the same person. You know, it's all one family system or um so that's not that uncommon to have that unfold in our offices. At least it's not been my experience that it's uncommon. I, I see it pretty regularly to the point that I'm expecting it to show up and if it doesn't that's fine, but I'm not surprised when it does. Mm-hmm. I, how that works though, I mean we're doing an event. Moonstone's putting on a um, training, six CEU hours um, on May 18th, all about how we mm-hmm. collaborate, how we treatment team, how we each honor our own discipline, how we learn from each other, um, how we teach each other what to look for and how to think about what it is we're doing. Not to the point that I begin, begin to do acupuncture or yoga therapy, but to the point that I can recognize when this is a good time to make that referral. And when I can recognize when they say, you know, if the acupuncture says, you know, she's, she, our early jokes where she would say things like, well, her liver's running really hot. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know what that means. And I don't have time to learn all the organs and what they're doing. But over time through our conversations, I I understand that when the, the acupuncture who's trained in Chinese medicine is talking about the organs, she's not talking about organs the way we do in Western medicine. She's talking about there's different systems that hold different energies and the emotions are attached to these energies. And then eventually we discover that however the body is holding that particular energy is also related to the emotion experience that I'm seeing uh, develop and emerge in the session. And the yoga therapist is helping the client move through their body. Sometimes the yoga therapist, will, Simone, will contact me and say, you know, um, she came in and moved into this pose and just broke into sobs and cried the whole session. And those are moments that I am may have or may not have. Do you mean I don't need to have her then come and cry with me and talk about it? Um, that's the other thing is that I'm not saying, well, I heard you cried in your yoga session. What was that all about? I'm I'm not necessarily doing that. Um, I have found that when the clients are moving through this, they're coming to each of us and working through what they need to work through with each of us. And that the key is, is that we are all talking to each other so we have a unified understanding of the patient not that the patient carries the burden of talking about it over and over again. Because sometimes the body memory 
is not related to a verbal, mental, cognitive process that needs to be talked about. 